This right here is the Samsung Galaxy Book S. But wait, this is not your regular laptop. In fact, this is one of the most unique laptops on the market right now, and that's because this laptop actually features Intel's brand new Intel Lakefield architecture, also known as Intel Hybrid Technology, which is a major departure from anything that Intel has done in the past. Many thanks to Intel for sponsoring this video, and buckle up because in this video, we'll be taking a closer look at what Intel Lakefield is, and how this architecture could really change everything in terms of how you use your laptop. And we're also going to do a very neat giveaway at the end of this video, so stay tuned for that as well. Okay, so right here we have a standard motherboard of a laptop. And on pretty much every laptop today, we have components such as the CPU, the GPU, the memory, the display controller, the USB Type-C or Thunderbolt controllers, the audio controller, and all of these separate components are placed onto the motherboard. This, however, is Intel's new hybrid technology, also known as Intel's Lakefield architecture, which uses a dramatically different design. So Intel has sent over these really cool Lego pieces for us to show you how Intel's Lakefield processors actually work. As you can see, this is a pretty tall processor with multiple layers to it. Intel's calling this a Foveris 3D packaging design. Essentially, 3D stacking multiple IP layers onto a single piece of silicon in order to shrink down the motherboard and save internal space. On the bottom layer, you can see things such as the audio controller, the USB Type-C controller, the storage controller for the UFS 3.0 storage, as well as the storage controller for the NVMe storage. Then the second layer goes right on top and this is where we get the actual CPU cores. Now, Intel's Lakefield architecture actually features a very odd number of cores. Like, not really. It literally has five cores. And that's because one of the cores, the big one right here, this is a Sony Cove architecture core. So this is based on a, a 10 nanometer process, and it's pretty much what you would find in Intel's tension-generation Ice Lake processors. And then to the left of that, we have four small Tremon cores, which are still based on a 10 nanometer process, but they use much less power than the big Sunny Cove core. They're similar to Intel's older Atom chips, but use an all-new architecture that promises much improved performance. And this is why Intel's Lakefield architecture is also called Intel's hybrid technology, because it uses two different processor architectures on the same chip. Also, on the second layer, we have the GPU which is based on Intel's Gen 11 graphics. So again, very similar to what we would find in Intel's 10 Gen Y series and U series of processors. And then finally, on top of that second layer, we have the RAM. This kind of integrated package on package memory is sometimes used in phone chipsets, but this is a first for Intel. The memory is dual channel two. So in this case, we have two layers of DRM modules here, resulting in essentially what is a quad layer processor. But okay, Daniel, so you save some space, but look at how big the whole CPU is. Like this thing is massive, crazy thick, and you know, crazy massive. Well, first of all, uh, this is called an SOC or a system on a chip, as a lot of the main components that you would normally find on the motherboard are now part of the actual processor. And then number two, this is a Lego model. <laughs> Um, of the actual processor. The real thing is actually very, very small. So the real thing is actually about the same size as a fingernail, and when it comes to the height, it is only one millimeter tall. So that's, that's pretty nuts. Holy smokes, but why? Like, what are the actual benefits um, that Intel's Lakefield architecture slash Intel's hybrid technology actually provides us. Well, the first big benefit is the massive amount of internal space that you save inside, which translates to a much, much, much thinner device. And not only that, but this is also a fanless processor, meaning that you also save a lot of space inside due to no fan being required. Right, so I've kind of been teasing this laptop behind all of these really cool uh, Lego pieces of the Intel Lakefield architecture, but there we go. This is the Samsung Galaxy Book S. And the reason why this laptop is so unique is because, well, this is the first device to actually use Intel's hybrid technology slash Lakefield processors. And as you can probably tell, this laptop is unbelievably thin. 
at only 11.8 millimeters thin, and this is at its thickest point, by the way, and 950 grams in terms of its weight, the Galaxy Book S is an extremely portable laptop. Like, it's so light that I can't even feel it inside my back. Like, at all. This thing is crazy, crazy light. So if you care about extremely thin and portable laptops that you can take with you anywhere, well, in that case, Intel's hybrid technology can easily deliver this. Now, the second benefit is in terms of the battery life. As most of the components on the motherboard are now part of the processor, you can actually save a lot of power this way. Speaking of power, this processor has a TDP of 7 watts and a standby consumption of just 2.5 milliwatts. So this thing is very power efficient. On the Galaxy Book S, Samsung claims up to 17 hours of battery life, which combined with its really thin form factor makes this a great choice for anyone looking for a portable laptop that can indeed last you for an entire day of work. And finally, the third benefit when it comes to um, in terms of Intel Lakefield or Intel's hybrid technology is in terms of performance. Now, don't get me wrong, you would not be using this for gaming or for any high intensive work at all. So this laptop and Intel's Lakefield architecture is mostly just for browsing the web and doing some Excel and some Word work. And that's mostly it. Now, you can actually edit photos in Photoshop, but the experience of doing that would be slower than what you would find on a regular Intel-based laptop. Like I said, the main reason why you would want to get this is for that form factor and that battery life. But there is something that I do want to mention in terms of the performance here. So you might be aware that we now have Windows for ARM as well. And there are a few laptops on the market, including literally an ARM version of this Galaxy Book S that does come with an ARM processor. The only problem here is that those laptops would not be able to run native Windows apps, which aside from a few ARM-based apps made by Microsoft, pretty much all Windows apps are 64-bit x86 apps. You see, ARM devices cannot run 64-bit x86 apps at all, while 32-bit versions of x86 apps such as Google Chrome, for example, they run under emulation. So there's a pretty uh, massive performance impact when using any third-party apps on Windows ARM. Intel's Lakefield natively supports 64-bit and 32-bit x86 apps, and therefore there is no emulation required which would impact the performance. And because of that, you can indeed run more intensive apps such as Photoshop or Lightroom or Adobe Premiere, and sure, while they won't run as well as on an Intel Y series or U series or higher, at least they will run much better than on ARM, and they're actually usable. Fun fact, when you do launch a more intensive app, that's when that Sunny Cove core actually gets activated to make sure that the system feels super responsive, as most of the time only those four Tremont cores will be used in order to provide you with the maximum amount of battery life. Okay, so I'm guessing everything sounds pretty good so far. So let's say that you're actually considering uh, an Intel Lakefield laptop, which at the moment this is the only one, the Galaxy Book S. So what are my thoughts on the actual laptop on the Samsung Galaxy Book S? Well, this is a 13 inch laptop with a 1080p 60 Hertz refresh rate display and fairly thin bezels. I would have preferred the bottom bezel to be as thin as the other three, uh, but that would have required a 16 by 10 display, whereas Samsung has decided to go for a more traditional 16 by nine panel. The display is fairly good, the colors are fairly accurate, and the viewing angles are good as well. It's also a touchscreen, I kind of wish that uh, the display would actually go flat or tilt a bit more, but I guess that's why we have the Galaxy Book Flex 4. Speaking of the display, when you're outdoors, it can actually go up to 600 nits of brightness, which uh, is from what I'm aware, the brightest display on any laptop on the market right now. Another reason why the Galaxy Book S is so good for people who are always on the go. Speaking of people on the go, the Galaxy Book S also has two USB Type-C ports, one on each side meaning that you can not only charge this with the same charger that you use to charge your smartphone, in fact, Samsung literally ships the same charger as they do with the Galaxy S20 line, but you can also use an external battery bank to charge the Galaxy Book S on the go, just like you would with a smartphone, which I think is absolutely amazing. The keyboard feels fine, um, it's a bit mushy, but it does have decent key travel. 
Now, I really do like the fact that we do get a Thinkpin Reader, which is actually built right into the power button, where it should be. <laughs> so you can easily and very quickly unlock your laptop without the need for you to type in your password. And I gotta say, I do like this trackpad quite a lot. So it's very smooth and large enough for all those Windows 10 gestures. And it also supports Windows Precision drivers. We also get Wi-Fi 6, as well as Bluetooth 5.0, and 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4X memory. And of course, that Intel Core i5 LP16G7 Lakefield SoC. We also have 512 gigabytes of EUFS storage alongside a microSD card slot, with which we can actually expand the storage to up to one terabyte. Okay, so in the end, who is this laptop for? Well, like I mentioned before, this is the perfect laptop for anyone who wants an extremely portable device that also offers a great battery life, and it can do both of these while also being able to run apps such as Photoshop, Lightroom, and Adobe Premiere, significantly better than all the other ARM-based laptops out there which again, we'll need to do it through emulation and therefore the performance will be heavily impacted there. You can check out the Galaxy Book S using the link below and you can also buy one if you want. And Intel will actually have way more Lakefield devices in the future, while the hybrid technology concept, it will make its way into way more uh, devices, even desktops with the launch of Elder Lake CPUs in 2021. And finally, I promised you guys that we'll be doing a giveaway. Remember that Intel Lakefield Lego that we showed you before? Well, we don't just have one of these, but that's why we have these three boxes right here. And we're keeping one because they're really cool, but we are giving two of these away to you guys. They're a really cool collector's edition thing. Like uh, this was done in collaboration between Intel and Lego. And you know, it's a one of a kind thing. And you know, it's like I said, it's really cool as well. So if you wanna win one of these two Intel Lakefield Legos, simply be a follower on Instagram at Zone of Tech and leave a comment on this post saying why do you wanna win. The winners will be announced in one week on Instagram via stories. So yeah, thank you all for watching this really interesting project. Um, thanks to Intel for sponsoring and literally making this whole project possible and also giving us an early look at Lakefield. Yeah, this has been pretty much it. Become a member if you want to support the channel and videos like this one. Subscribe, hit the bell icon if you want to see more content, more interesting tech videos like this one hopefully was. I'm Daniel. Again, you can use the links below to check out uh, the Galaxy Book S and also learn more about Intel's Lakefield slash hybrid technology. This has been Zenof Tech. Again, I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Zenof Tech, signing out. Cheers. On the bottom layer, you can see things such as the audio controller, the USB Type-C controller, the storage controller for the UFS 3.0 storage, as well as the storage controller for the NVMe storage.